in this session we are going to know the accounting for provisions and reserve there are certain expenses and losses which are related to current year but the exact amount of those losses and expenses cannot be estimated rightly take for example if you sell some goods on credit to someone are you sure that you will get the amount from the customer no there may be possibility that some amount may be paid by the customer but some portion of the amount may not be paid then what will you do we are supposed to take the account of such expected losses in the future for this we make the provision for such losses so we can make the provision for losses for the bad debts which may occur due to non payment of the amount by the customer similarly take another example suppose you need to make some repair on the machinery in the future for that also you cannot exactly estimate what will be the amount of expenses to be incurred for that we have to make the provision again let me take some example there are certain examples of provision which may occur in the current year some of the examples which we make in the current year are provision for depreciation it may be provision for bad and doubtful debts it may be provision for taxation there may be some more provision for the losses such as provision for discount on debtors provision for repairs and renewals so how we do the provision we have to know it in a much better way provision we make to show the true and correct picture of the accounting as per the principle of concept of conservatism we must make the provision for expected losses in advance and for that we make the provision accounting for provisions are to be done in the current year the question arises how we do the provision actually the provisions are considered as a charge against profit so in order to calculate the real profit the correct profit we have to deduct the provisions from before arriving at the net profit and therefore they are calculated before arriving at the net profit they are shown in two ways the first way is to either deduct this provision from the concerned asset in the asset side of the balance sheet for example we can deduct the provision for bad debts from the debtors in the asset side or we can deduct the provision for depreciation from the respective asset in the asset side there are certain provisions which are not deducted from the respective asset but they are shown in the liability side of the balance sheet under the heading current liabilities and provision let us discuss the accounting for the provision for bad debts before we do the accounting as it is mentioned here that the debtors are of three types the first are good debtors the second are the bad debts and the third are doubtful debts good debtors are those debtors from which we are certain that we will recover the amount their money will not be in vain so there is no need of doing any provision for such debtors what about bad debts bad debts occur when any debtor does not make any payment so it is a loss so this loss will be totally debited to profit and loss account now the third one is doubtful debts as the term clearly indicates doubtful that means they are in doubt 
they may pay or they may not pay. So, in this case it may be possible that some percentage of the amount may be recovered, some may not be recovered. So, the amount which is not recovered for that we have to make the provision. How the accounting is done we will know it now. The provision is a charge against profit. So, for creating a provision for doubtful debts, we have to pass the entry profit and loss account debit to provision for doubtful debts. This amount is to be debited in the profit and loss account before arriving at the net profit. We can do it practically also by taking an example. Let us see how this example works. Here I am giving you an extract of a trial balance on March 31st, 2011. In the figure it is given that the Sunday debtors are valuing at rupees 88,000. In the additional information it is further given that bad debts proved bad which is not recorded amounted to rupees 8,000 and there is a provision for bad debts is to be maintained at 10 percent of the debtors. In our case, as I have mentioned that there is a bad debt of rupees 8000 which is not recorded in the books. So, first of all we will pass the entry for this, the following entry will be passed and the entry will be bad debt account debit to debtors account and how much was the bad debt? The bad debt was rupees 8000. This bad debt will be shown in the debit side of profit and loss account. So, after passing the entry for bad debts, this bad debts is to be transferred to profit and loss account at the end of the year by passing the entry profit and loss account debit to bad debts. So, we will transfer this bad debts to profit and loss account by debiting in the profit and loss account. So, out of 88,000 8000 will be deducted from it. So, the remaining debtors are 80,000. Now, we will make the provision as mentioned in the case at the rate of 10 percent for the remaining debtors. The profit and loss account will be debited as rupees 8000 and transfer it to provision for bad debts account that is 8000 rupees. Now, let us discuss the next term that is reserves. Reserves are made by every business when there is sufficient amount of profit for the business and they make these reserves for meeting out some contingencies in the future also. Let us see some of the examples of reserve which can be made by the business. The examples are general reserve, workman compensation reserve, investment fluctuation reserve, capital reserve, dividend equalization reserve, reserve for redemption of debentures. We must also understand the difference between reserves and provision. We can take certain basis of difference between the provision and reserve. The first basis for the difference between provision and reserve is the nature. As it is clearly mentioned that the provisions are the charge against the profit because this provision is debited from the profit and loss account before arriving at the net profit whereas reserves are the appropriation of profit. The reserves are made only when there are sufficient profits. Now, the next point is the purpose. It is clear that the provisions are created for the liability or expenses which are pertaining to the current period and the amount of which is not certain, but the reserves are made for future contingencies or for expansion or growth or you can say for strengthening the business. The effect on taxable profit, the provision reduces the taxable profits because it is calculated before arriving at the net profit whereas the reserve has no effect 
on the taxable profit. And another difference which we can take, how it is presented in the balance sheet. Now, let us discuss something about the various types of reserve which can be created. There are basically two types of reserve, they are general reserve and specific reserve. Let us discuss something about these type of reserves. First is general reserve. This reserve is also called as the free reserve. Why it is called as free reserve? Because the management is free to use this reserve for any of the purposes. There is no specific purpose for that and therefore, they are called as general reserve or free reserve. The next type of reserve is specific reserve. The specific reserves are further categorized into four. They are dividend equalization reserve, workman compensation reserve, investment fluctuation reserve or debenture redemption reserve. Why it is called as specific reserve? Because the reserve has been created for a specific reserve. The first specific reserve is dividend equalization reserve. Actually, this reserve is made to maintain the equitability in the dividend rate. Whenever the company has extraordinary profit, they can transfer some part of profit to this reserve and when there is not sufficient profit, they can utilize this amount for the declaration of the dividend. The next reserve is workman compensation reserve. What does the workman compensation mean? Compensation means to meet out some kind of losses happening to the employee due to some accidents or due to some losses. So, this kind of reserve is made to compensate the losses suffered by employee. Another type of reserve is investment fluctuation reserve. There may be possibility that when we invest some money in the market, amount of the investment may increase or fall. So, meet out the losses on investment, we can make the investment fluctuation reserve. The last but not least reserve which is mentioned is debenture redemption reserve. As we all know that debenture is a kind of liability which has to be repaid to the debenture holders and therefore, every company has to make an adequate sum of amount for the redemption of these debentures and for this purpose, the company makes the reserve out of the profit and loss in the form of debenture redemption reserve. So, these are the reserves which are of specific in nature. That is all for today. Thank you. Have a nice day.